We're currently in week four of this marathon training, and I pulled my freaking hamstring. <coughs> just choked on my saliva a little bit. Really good exercise for you to incorporate just as your daily routine. I know, I know, you're getting kind of a show here. Let's get to uh, compress it. So here I am, episode two, marathon training, sitting on my couch, drinking coffee, enjoying the beautiful morning with my good buddy, Juju. We're currently in week four of this marathon training, and I pulled my freaking hamstring. So what does that mean for this week's episode of this marathon training? Well, I guess... That means for you guys, we're gonna go through all of the things that I'm doing to recover so that I can be jogging by next week. Now typically, if you have a hamstring injury, which by the way, I pulled my hamstring twice in college, and it really put a hinder on the potentiality of me playing Major League Baseball. For those of you, for those of you that don't know, wow, I'm really stumbling over my words, it must be the coffee. For those of you that don't know, I played college baseball, ended up tearing my hamstrings, and that's about the end of that story. So I'm quite familiar with how to prep my hamstring, kind of take the right tactics to recover, feel my best, whatever, but the moral of this story is I'm running that freaking marathon. If I'm in a freaking, if I'm on crutches, I am running the marathon. I, there's nothing that's gonna stop me. I told people I was gonna do it, we're doing it here, and I think this is valuable. So if you have any kind of injury, I'm gonna kind of walk you through the different things that I'm doing. Again, I think I already said that, so without reiterating it 37,000 times, we're just gonna jump into the video by starting our morning off with a little walk to get the blood flowing, and just a little update on how I'm feeling. It's day three, day three or four, after pulling my hamstring, and it's not as bad as I thought, so that's good news, but I also think that everything that I'm doing every single day that you're about to see in this video is really helping. So, we're gonna start off in the normal way. Me and Juju, we're gonna go walk on the beach. You wanna go to the beach? You wanna go to the beach? You wanna go to the beach? This is hands down Juju's favorite thing ever, and since this is gonna be another day in the life type vlog, I'm gonna show you some clips of her favorite thing to do, which is also one of my favorite things to do because I just enjoy being on the beach, getting grounded, watching the waves crash. All right, we know I'm a weirdo. Oh, 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 are you excited? Are you excited? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, okay, you gotta sit. Sit, did you? Sit, sit, uh-uh, this is mine, sit. All right, good girl, good girl. You always give me a fight until we get the leash on, and then we're walking out the door. Oh, are you so proud? All right, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Oh my goodness. So excited. Golly, what a beautiful freaking day to be alive. Here she goes. <laughs> Literally her favorite place. Oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Oh yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> so why is walking beneficial for a lower injury, right? So I'm just kind of gauging, especially being on the sand, I'm kind of digging my heels in as I walk. And the hamstrings are predominantly gonna be used when you're really activating through the heel. So kind of every day, this has kind of been my gauge first thing in the morning, like how is my hamstring feeling? Wow, that's beautiful, look at these birds. So today, I'm definitely feeling more progression. So just a little bit of blood flow into the legs and uh, assessment to start the day. All right, so we're back at home and I'm realizing that I should say, these are all protocols that I should be following regardless of having a freaking pulled hamstring or not. So if you are out there and you're training for something, if you have these resources, which like walking or the cream that I'm about to show you, it's all pretty accessible. There are some things that I have that are probably a little harder, but I'll suggest some different 
I guess, modifications or alternatives, but these are all great things to just take care of your overall health and wellness, especially when training for something or in your everyday life, just to feel good. Because isn't that what we're all after? Just feeling good? So next up, before we go work out, I'm gonna throw some of this CBD Recovery Ice 1000 milligram can of Bedoya, whatever that says. It's basically Icy Hot. They sent me this a long time ago. I have no affiliation, but it seems to be working pretty well for me right now. So don't mind me. I'm just gonna sit over here and lube myself up with this cream because Although I won't be doing lower body, obviously, when I go work out, sometimes when you're moving around, you don't really realize how much your posterior chain or the backside of your body gets engaged. So I wanna make sure that this is just feeling good, nice, and uh, ready to go in case there's any craziness that I embark on. But not that crazy, because obviously I have a torn, pulled, strain, whatever it is, non-existent hamstring. Let's go get crazy. Shh, don't wake her up. We have made it to the gym. So I'm gonna go in here. I am going to do some banded knee exercises that I'll explain while I'm doing it. Hopefully I can find a quiet spot, but kind of explain, especially if you're having knee pain, maybe some glute pain, quad stuff issues, this exercise will help you. And then I'll go into a little backwards walk and just so I don't have to explain during a, the backwards walk. That's also helping me work from the toe to the heel. So again, I'm working that posterior chain and just feeling it out. I'm gonna go super slow. This is always a part of my routine, but it's also gonna help me rehab the hamstring just to strengthen those muscles. It's almost like a hamstring curl, a camstring curl, because I'm on the camera, haha, <laughs> stupid. Anyways, so, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna go into some arms and a bike session. So I'll show you those clips. I'm not gonna go into the arm workout, upper body workout. I just uploaded a full upper body workout on my Instagram during this little hamstring issue. It's a really good workout. So check that out there. And then we're gonna go into the bike flush, which is where I'll talk to you after I'm talking to you on the bands. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tie a band right around something that's steady. Hopefully it's steady so you don't go falling back like crazy. And basically we're gonna take our leg. I'm gonna start with my non-hurt leg first. And we're gonna come back to where there's some resistance back here. And basically you're gonna keep one leg flat on the ground. And then this other leg is gonna go super slow up into the toe. So you're almost flexing your calf working that backside of your leg, and then you're gonna press down through your heel. So then I'm just right here, you're gonna feel really nice quad activation, and then come right back up into it nice and slow. I'm gonna go for 20 reps on each side, but essentially what this is doing is pumping more blood into the knee, again, really good for the knee pain, as well as pumping blood into the quad and that glute when you really extend through the backside. So it's gonna help me alleviate and activate the muscles around the hamstring, as well as build strength through other muscle groups. That way, nothing gets overcompensated for while the injury is taking place. So again, really good exercise for you to incorporate just as your daily routine. Obviously, that's how I'm starting today. Posterior chain is engaged. Now, let's go walk backwards and get into a workout. But you're not gonna see the workout. By the way, this lighting is crazy. Just don't know when to stop. But now it's time to get a little cycle session in. Mind you, I still haven't eaten, kind of still in this fasted state. Contrary to episode one, where I was really getting into carbs, but obviously I can't train this week, so more focused on feeling good. But I'm gonna jump into a flush bike. I want you, if maybe you're really sore, this is a really great way to relieve some soreness from an everyday workout. Get in here, get on the bike, and just go at a cadence 
where it's not too hard, you're not taxing your heart rate too much, but really you're trying to keep it above 80 RPMs, which is revolutions per minute. And that's gonna help you flush out that lactic acid, so that's what I'm gonna aim to do. I'm gonna take it up a notch and try to go about 100 RPMs, but we'll see how it feels. I'm feeling a little exotic, because I did do some air squats and they felt really freaking good. So with that said, if you are gonna use some kind of flush like this on an off day, I recommend anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, get some good cardio in, just flush out everything in your body, you're gonna feel amazing afterwards. So again, another reason why I'm doing this right now, especially if training for the marathon, is to make sure that my cardio kind of stays in check. That's why I'm going up to 100 RPMs. So let's get into it. Let's have a nice bike ride on the bike to nowhere. Get it? because it's a stationary bike. And here we are with the final numbers. 34 minutes, 10 and a half miles. Average RPM is 99. Feeling good. And you know I had to put the hoodie back on to sweat my tushy off. What do I look like? Like a little minion? Can't really tell. Peep? You know those little marshmallow things? Ah, uh, the sign of good work. Kind of disgusting, but hey, what are you gonna do? Yum. Super yum. Oh my goodness, are you happy that I'm home? Are you happy? I told you I'd come home. I told you I would come home. I told you, I told you, I told you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ah! Now that we are home, it is time to get into the next recovery tip, which is simply taking care of your nutrition. So I'm gonna be eating clean as I normally do, but a big thing, especially with this with injuries is making sure you don't have alcohol. Because why? It's gonna dehydrate you. It's gonna make it really hard for your musculature to develop and grow and repair in any way, shape, or form. So hydrate, lots of BCAAs, lots of sodium, good electrolytes, and limit the alcohol, preferably to zero. It's 145, and here's a spread to break my fast. If you followed me for a while, you know I'm a weirdo when it comes to breaking my fast. It's not a big meal, but it's gonna be super high protein, a little bit of carbs, a little bit of fats, but the goal here, especially with injury, is, I don't know why I talk with my hand as if you can see me. Let's flip it around. The goal here is to go super high protein, especially when you're going through an injury, because that's gonna help those muscles and those ligaments, and everything just to repair better, get back to normal a little faster. <coughs> just choked on my saliva a little bit. Anyways, and therefore just aiding in the process a little more. So what do we have? We have some ground bison, that's about 93% lean. Then I've got two rice cakes, that's like eight grams of carbs per rice cake, so it's barely anything. Salmon lox, which is super high in protein, it's like 12 grams of protein per serving. I've got about 30 grams of protein there. And then I've got Greek yogurt mixed in my Performix fruity cereal. It tastes just like Fruity Pebbles, it's delicious. That's like 24 grams of protein, right? 22 plus another 18. That's 40 grams of protein in and of itself right here. Little blueberries. And then I've got my greens with some apple cider vinegar and I've actually got Performix BCAAs in there as well. I've been using this Your Super Company greens. It's pretty good, but I got a little secret for you. So my secret is that I may or may not be working on a formula for my own green supplement. So let me know in the comments if that's something you would be interested in and if you'd get on the bandwagon of taking your greens every day so that you can get your micronutrients so you can feel good, your gut is in the right shape and then you can just freaking go through your day with energy, conquering life. Because again, who doesn't wanna feel good? We have finished our first meal of the day and you guessed it, we're going on another walk. I gotta go get my daily fix of sunshine, get the rays on the skin, work this hammy out again, just trying to keep it moving. We'll come back, we'll plunge, we'll get into my recovery boots, we'll get into some more nutrition, and then we'll end with the fun 
stim thing that I'm sure you guys have seen on my Snapchat. It's so good. It's so fun. I'm such a weirdo. And we are back from the 3.23 mile walk. I'm not sure if you can hear Juju, but she might need some of these recovery tactics. She's so happy, but <laughs> so tired. What do you think, Juju? Huh? What do you think, buddy? No? Let's go cold plunge. It's time. It is freaking time. I always gotta hype myself up just to go get this cold plunge. I'm gonna go do 10 minutes, just my legs down to ice my legs. Now, I understand that not everyone has a cold plunge. Now, you can go to the gas station, you can buy a bunch of bags of ice, fill up your bathtub, and do an ice tub for recovery. So obviously, I'm doing this more for the effects and benefits of getting the cold therapy on my legs. My cold plunge is about 39 degrees, and it's gonna help decrease inflammation. It's going to, basically, if you wanna get into like the, the blood cells, we're gonna produce more blood cells in order for it to get the recovery that it needs. We can go into a whole scientific episode on that if you wanted to, but needless to say, basically, we're icing the legs. I'm not gonna show you the whole 10 minute session, probably just getting in and out, but here we are. So, again, or if you need to, just grab a bag of frozen peas and put it on your hamstring or whatever hurts, and then ice it. And just to hit a quick point on icing, the old acronym RICE, rest, ice, compression, and elevate, there is a lot of truth to that as well. Then you mix in heat. I actually haven't used heat therapy for this injury because we're on day three, day four, whatever it is of this injury and you're not supposed to use heat within that first three days just to, you don't wanna really loosen up the muscle even more than it already is because if it pu it's pulled or whatever injury you have, there's chances that there's damage, obviously. So with that protocol, I recommend like 20 minutes of ice on and then maybe elevating for 10. Just kind of going through some kind of protocol that is, and you can look that up on Google, but something that feels good and doesn't put you in an uncomfortable position. I'm gonna get into the compression piece later on after I cold plunge, shower, and maybe get some food in me. And then wrap this video up with the last few couple recovery tactics. I keep saying those words, but obviously that's why we're here. Ten minutes. That's all we gotta do. Just gotta breathe through it. That's all. Oh yeah. That's cold. I always gotta end it with a nice little dip underwater. It's 39 degrees. Nice shock to the body. Get the endorphins flowing. Meal number two. And it's actually gonna be the last meal of the day. Again, I'm kind of restricting calories a little bit because I'm hurt. And I'm not burning as much through my walks as I would on my runs or my crazy bike rides. I did burn what? I guess I'm at 16,000 steps and 2,400 calories. All right, it's kind of a lot, but I'm kind of just sticking to being in a caloric deficit while getting my protein goals because as I said earlier, that is the biggest point of emphasis, especially when you're injured. So I'll show you what I got on my plate here. It's uh, probably gonna be the most random plate of food you've ever seen in your life. Look at all that protein, yum. Come on, that's a good joke. All right, so on a serious note, here's what we got. We have got a really gross looking avocado. We've got four eggs and two egg whites with some spinach, there's about three cups of spinach in there. We've got half a head of asparagus. We have a pork chop, which is about 23 grams of protein. Within the eggs and the egg whites, I'm gonna get another I don't know, probably 30 grams of protein. And then some kimchi. And then I will smack this as part of my recovery, obviously, and just fueling my body. Here I go with my hand again. And then we'll get into our last couple of recovery things that you can actually see and might be able to take to heart because I'm just talking a lot about food. And then I'll also have a protein smoothie tonight to make sure I get to my protein goals. All right, for our next 
victim of a recovery tactic. We are going to do some compression therapy. So these are the re Therabody Recovery Air boots. Again, I know it's not accessible to everyone. These are actually pretty affordable and the best things ever. You can take them on the plane, whatever. But they're essentially like, think of them like a squeegee. When you squeegee water, it kind of starts in one spot and it builds up, builds up, builds up, and then pushes out, right? So now think about gravity and how it's always pushing down, right? All the fluids in our legs and inflammation is always flowing downwards. So what this is gonna do is gonna start by squeezing air at the top of my toe and it's gonna squeeze air kind of almost all the way, like imagine this is my foot, this is kind of funny, but it's gonna squeeze from down here and then keep pushing and pushing and pushing all the way up and it'll fill this entire boot and essentially it's gonna switch the blood flow. So it's great to keep your legs fresh, not even for just injuries, if maybe you're on your feet all day, these are, this is a great way to keep your legs fresh for the next day. I use them all the time, especially after long bike rides, um, or if your legs are just sore. Again, it's compression, you can kind of adjust the thing over here, but I'll give you an up close and personal look and show you uh, kind of how I go through this whole thing. But for now, let's get, uh, let's get to uh, compressing. The exception of Juju, you can tell these are getting all kinds of filled up, right? So if you see down there, you see they're completely filled. So it's working its way up from the ground all the way up to my hips to blow out these legs. So this entire kind of bag looking substance will be completely filled up with the air in a second. I don't know if I have the bandwidth to wait for this, but oh, here it goes. Oh, yeah, you see it? Whoa. So it's pushing all the blood up, allowing for more blood flow. And essentially it'll go through about one minute cycles every time. And then it will deflate as you're about to hear in a second. And there it goes. So now it'll deflate, it'll let the blood kind of keep flow its normal path and then it'll switch it up again for good recovery. So I'm gonna do this for about 45 minutes. All right, we're gonna get into our last little recovery tactic of the day. It's a little device called a TENS unit, T-N-S. I'm pretty sure it stands for transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. So essentially, I'm gonna, t and by the way, this thing's like 40 bucks on Amazon. If you have back spasms, any kind of crazy pain, like I'm, I'm not kidding, this thing single-handedly will change your life. And like I had these, this is what every athletic trainer in America uses, no matter where you're at in college for college baseball, like this is what we had in training room, whatever. So I figured I had to get my own, especially if you're like a, a long distance, athlete, if, if you're just hurting any day, it's really great. So essentially what's gonna do is gonna send electric pulses. I'm gonna place these things, which is hilarious to watch when I do it by myself. Well, it's just really hard to reach back there. Anyways, so, it's gonna be placed around the point of damage and then it's gonna send electrical shocks and I can turn it up and it's basically gonna, th the way that the science says that it works is it's basically bringing natural hormones and when, whoa, endorphins into the muscle to make it feel better, right? And not to mention the electrical stimulation is gonna be, basically act as if it's getting movement. So. I'm gonna put these things on. You're not gonna be able to see that it's twitching, but just show you what it looks like when I have them on. And again, super, super beneficial. If you've got questions, ask me in the comments. I will be sure to get back with you, but 40 bucks to change your life. All right, I know, I know. You're getting kind of a show here. That's just whatever. This is just how I gotta do it. But so I've tore my hand, or I pulled my hamstring right in here. So I'm gonna kind of go along the edges of this thing. Boom, we're gonna place one right here. I'm gonna take one of the small ones, put it right up in the kisser. Cause that's, oh yeah, feel where the pull is. I'm gonna take these other ones. Now, untangle, boom, get the small one, put it down here a little bit and then 
this very last one will go again kind of making the circle ish area around I'm realizing my windows are open so if anybody sees me or peeks in they're probably going to be laughing like crazy so this is kind of what it looks like i'll turn it on get it going but i don't really feel the need to show you that because you're not going to be able to see anything so with that said that is all i have for you today i guess the last two little tips i'm going to go put that cream on as soon as i'm done doing 30 minutes of this and then the last sleep for any kind of recovery or last sleep the last tip would be to get good sleep because in our sleep that's when our bodily processes are saying hey let's fix you so prioritize sleep above all else that's probably the biggest tip because that's when all the natural body processes are going to happen to uh naturally heal you so with that said that's all i've got for you i appreciate you watching hope you took something away on episode two of training for a marathon although there was not much training going on it's more of recovery for today but that said, it is time to wrap this thing up because I have been talking for entirely too long. I always have the goal, here I go again. I always have the goal of having like a 10, 15 minute video and it always somehow ends up being like 47. So uh, anyways, I'll shut up. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell icon to the first one to see my videos. I'll see you next time on two of you with me. That's the end of my sales pitch. Have an awesome freaking day. And don't forget to smile.